So we've already been introduced, so <laughs> we can just totally skip this part. Um, so the PEI Museum and Heritage Foundation was formed in 1970, and it was done in order to um, keep artifacts from leaving the province. Things were leaving the province in truckloads, so the Heritage Foundation started up, and it eventually developed into the PEI Museum. Um, we also are a decentralized museum system. Um, we have two central storage facilities and seven different sites. Uh, the museum has 14 full-time staff, nine seasonal staff, and depending on what's going on during the year, um, varying amounts of different um, summer students and volunteers, um, that kind of thing. Um, so this is just uh, examples of our central storage facility, which is actually basically a, a warehouse. Um, we, uh, it was purchased in 83, and it was retrofit to store artifacts, and um, it's, it served as well. It could be bigger, um, but, but we do what we can with what we have. Um, and those are just examples of the seven different sites. Um, we keep saying that we have about 80,000 objects, but it's probably closer to 100,000 objects now because we get giant collections that come in all the time. Um, approximately a quarter of these are on display at the seven different sites, and the rest are at the two storage facilities. Most of them are at the, uh, the Watts, the 77 Watts location, and the remainder, our large-scale furniture is all down the street in a space that we rent. Um, there's a broad range of items, everything from locomotives to, you know, buttons and arrow points and, and everything in between. Um, we collect everything that has anything to do with island history, so if it tells part of the story, then, then we collect it. Well, um, some things that are, you know, part of extraordinary life, some things that are part of everyday life, and uh, all things that tell the story. So these are just some examples. Um, the picture on the top left here is an overview of our storage packed to the, to the rafters. Um, and then just some examples of some of the kinds of things that we, that we have. Um, there is the display areas. We have display at seven different sites, but there's no real display area for the rest of the collection. The sites are theme-based or time-based, so things that don't really fit don't get a whole lot of opportunity to go out on, uh, on exhibition except um, a rotating space that we have at EPTEC where we complement some of their art exhibits. Um, yeah, no display space within the storage. So um, the building floor plans, the building footprint is approximately 8,000 square feet. Uh, there's two floors of storage and additional rooms, which is about 9,360 square feet. And then for this project, we're, uh, there, the PI Museum is looking at the two textile areas, which is about um, 1,600 square feet. So. This is storage before the reorganization. Um, they're, we're making the best use of the area that we can. Um, there's some pipes and ductwork in the way. The cabinets, which are in that main area with the red, um, they're taking up a bigger footprint than they really need to. And it's also inconvenient to take large items up and down the stairs. Um, so for that reason, there was a lot, wasn't very much clutter <laughs> and non-collection material in the way. Um, and, but the other issue was that there's not a lot of swing space to work with. Um, there's, uh, we call Boyd, he's the preparator and exhibit guy. Uh, there's some of his workshops, but um, that we can use if we need to for overflow. I love the the uh, floor plan because it makes everything look all nice and neat. And, and <laughs> but you, but you, this you is the reality. Sense. Yeah, <laughs> it looks good in the diagram, but then but then this is the reality. Boom. Yeah. So oh, this is the um, room that we're 
going to be reorganizing the textile room up in the top and it also houses some rolled rugs and then the plastic covered areas are the shelving um, for, the, for the textiles that we'll be reorganizing. Okay, we have the, the black and white version of the, uh, <laughs> the self-evaluation. Um, we found that, well, the first time we, we kind of did it and we were, you know, everybody tries to be like, oh, we're, we're doing really well. And you try to be a little, you know, maybe forgiving. And then we went back and we took a really good, honest look at it. An, and, an uh, honest look. <laughs> and um, we come up, you know, in three areas we are in need of, uh, of a reorg. And within management, not so bad, just a few little things that need to be, well, a few big things that need to be adjusted. But. Um, so as far as the usage goes, in the main area, we're using about 46% of our floor space. Um, it's all in shelves, mostly in shelves, and then there's drawer units that have to be open, so we have to have enough space between them. Um, the units are full, well over capacity. Um, the only saving grace as far as the overall fullness is the room height usage. The drawer units are only probably, you know, four feet high, so we have all the space above that could be used. They're piled with stuff now, but better use of the space. Um, the 55% overall fullness does not quite sound right whenever you look at the pictures, but really we just need to kind of reuse the space more effectively. 80% um, of the collection is inventoried in the section that we're working on, and most of the objects, in, in a perfect world, in, you know, it should all be accessioned, but it may not be, so we allowed a little bit of that. Um, and most objects in that area can be retrieved probably, I was being, I didn't want to be too optimistic on that, but, but within 10 minutes. Um, the majority of it's inventoried, so if it's, if it's within the inventoried section, then it can go and be retrieved within you know, a couple of minutes, but if it's not, then it might take a little longer to, to find the things. Um, so, obviously, one of the main issues is overcrowding, <laughs> as you can tell by some of the pictures. Um, we, we, there is a location system within the museum, but um, they, things don't have their own unique location, so that's something that they'll be working on, will be working on. Um, access and retrieval, uh, because you have to get through a number of items to get to the one that you want. and. Sometimes, as you can see in the bottom picture there, especially objects of different categories are stored together. So just because there was a space, they were too big to fit in where they're supposed to be. Um, so they end up in the, in the textile section. So all of those things will go and find their, their own unique home. Um, so some of the issues with the building um, because of overcrowding, it's difficult to move some large objects. So you can see the canoe hanging <laughs> um, there. Um, and then so with the building, there's uh, no room for growth within the collection, or there's not a lot of room for growth within the collection. Uh, it's uh, difficult to move larger items safely, um, and it requires some exterior repairs to reduce risk to the collection. <laughs> um, so the main issues for furniture and smaller equipment, again, uh, more room for growth. Uh, it's not always the most practical use of the floor space. Again, I mentioned these cabinets that you can see in the pictures. Um, they're using up a lot of floor space and it's because, do we even know how long they've been here? They've a long, forever, <laughs> Linda says forever. So it was something that was inherited and uh, probably got for free, so you used it, but now it's time to reassess. Um, the drawers are very full, as you can see. They have drawer lists, but maybe sometimes things always don't make their way back into that, and so the overcrowding is a increased risks to the objects. Um, and also the shelves with the blankets um, and quilts and textiles that we're doing are, again, overcrowded. Um, so with the, the main issues with management, um, inadequate resources. Um, there isn't always enough money to like go and buy new shelving, so we 
have what we affectionately call Franken shelves. <laughs> you can see that the tops are actually the runners for garage door system, and they just go on the top of the shelves, and we just keep going up as high as we can go up. Um, there's not enough trained staff on site at the storage, and there are discrepancies between the actual location and the database information, because sometimes we're so full that when things go back, they sometimes go back where they fit rather than where they came from. Um, and here's just a little illustration of one of our management issues. So this is the number of trained staff that we could use. And this is the number of trained staff that, that we have. And this, this would be the boss right here. So. <laughs> not, not too late. Oh, here we go. So the urgent priorities are reducing the stress on the textile collection resulting from overcrowding, um, assigning specific locations for each item to enhance the retrieval and reshelving, um, remove inadequate storage furniture and rehouse the contents to make better use of the floor space, which we've mentioned, and regrouping the collections by category to improve access. So getting rid of some of those things that because they fit, but they don't really belong there. <laughs> our, our reorg team. And then our, our, our actual reorg team. <laughs> and then our real team. If it comes up. <laughs> there. <laughs> so that's us. And that's a wrap.